This video is brought to you by Virchi, a science and technology company offering research and development and consulting. Before we get into the video, I would like to make a few notes to the viewer. This theory might seem to go against mainstream science. In reality, these discoveries actually complement Kepler's, Newton's, and Einstein's theories of the laws of gravity in relation to the functionality of the solar system. Because their equations and theories only give the formulas with vague explanations of the forces at work, they do not address the anatomy of the gravitational force at work in the solar system. They are partial explanations with partial truth that fit and explain some of the factors of gravity in specific scenarios, but none of them can be applied as an absolute theory of gravity. Plasma cosmology and the electric universe are two new theories that need to be incorporated into the current mainstream astronomy and cosmology theories because new discoveries in cosmology are confirming the electromagnetic and electric nature of the universe. Many experiments, situations, and scenarios in the past 100 years have found fundamental flaws in the existing theories, and scientists use vague explanations to confirm these theories. That is why physicists are still looking for a unifying theory to encompass all the issues and forces found throughout the universe. I believe that these discoveries will take us one step closer to a deeper understanding of the anatomy of the forces at work, rather than assuming that all masses attract only due to size, mass, and relative motions. There are clearly more factors at work. One should judge a theory by its merit and simplicity, and by the fact that it fits and explains many scenarios and anomalies in the solar system. Science is an evolution of discovery, and many changes are still to come. Science should not be treated like religious dogma, Science should have open-minded debate and analyses, and should always welcome possible new discoveries and theories. Old scientific hypotheses could be partially wrong or incomplete. Scientific knowledge still has plenty of room to evolve, improve, and change. And finally, climate change. Climate change and Earth changes are serious man-made issues affecting life on Earth now. However, natural cycles that can affect climate also exist Therefore, both man-made and natural cycles are true and valid issues and both need to be considered. The structure of the moon and the mechanism that locks the moon gravitationally on Earth's structure. The moon is locked onto Earth's orbit because of the gravitational and electromagnetic attraction and repulsion between the moon and the Earth. The moon is split magnetically in a symmetrical manner which creates two magnetically opposed mirror image half spheres that simultaneously pull and push or attract and repel gravitationally on planet Earth. This effect creates a two-way gravitational grip locking the moon on the planet's structure and locking it onto an orbital rotation around Earth. The moon's half sphere facing toward Earth or the near side is pushing outward or repelling away from the planet gravitationally and electromagnetically. And the half sphere on the opposite side, the far side to the Earth, is pulling or attracting towards the planet, which keeps it locked onto Earth's structure. Earth's moon has two axes, a north-south vertical pole axis in parallel to Earth's magnetic poles, locked onto Earth's north and south polarities and Earth is also locked in parallel on the solar system polarity, similar to the other planets in our solar system. A second axis, perpendicular to the first axis, pointing to Earth and locking it onto Earth's central structure, creating a two-way gravitational electromagnetic grip. Earth's moon does not spin on its own axis, but rather it orbits Earth, which spins on its axis while orbiting the Sun. From an observational perspective of the moon and the Sun, it would seem that the moon is spinning on its vertical axis in relation to the Sun. However, this is incorrect. It is merely a visual illusion, because the moon is locked onto Earth on two axes, a vertical axis in parallel to Earth's magnetic poles axis, and a second perpendicular axis locked onto Earth's center structure, 
which keeps it from spinning on any of its axis in relation to Earth. It is Earth that is spinning on its own axis while in orbit around the Sun. The Moon is locked in and rotating on Earth's axis and not its own vertical axis. Due to the Moon's north-south pole axis being in parallel and locked onto Earth's northern and southern poles, and the second perpendicular axis of the Moon being locked onto the central structure of Earth, this keeps the Moon from spinning on either of its two axes. Thus, the correct explanation why the Moon always faces Earth on the same side and does not rotate in any direction. This is why we only see the same side of the Moon from Earth. It can be observed that all symmetrically spherical satellites, aka moons, in our solar system are locked in a second perpendicular axis onto their respective orbited planet in the same manner as Earth's moon. This causes them to always face their planets on the same side. There are multiple possibilities that can make up the structure and composition of the inner core of a planet. The inner structure of Earth could consist of one or more inner solid core. My opinion and observation is that Earth has one solid torus inner core. However, I will present three possible variations. The inner solid core structure could be 1. Single core torus shaped or donut shaped or 2. Double torus core shaped as in the following diagram with two mirror image solid cores or 3. A multi-layered solid core, onion style, with one core inside the other. The inner solid cores of all three presented variations consist of compositions of highly metallic and magnetic potential. After extensive research into electricity, magnetism, astrophysics and astronomy, I observed that all the planets in the solar system have unique spin and orbit periods. These periods of axial spin and revolutions around the Sun are not accidental or random, but a result of measurable interlocking conditions that keep the planets in the solar system in synchronicity and equilibrium, just like the gears in a mechanical watch. A planet's magnetosphere and axial spin force are due to 1. Their inner solid core and crust-slash-mantle material composition and structural shape, 2. Their moon's size, 3. The Sun's current, 4. The induction effect, and 5. And finally, the three-part homopolar generator effect. The homopolar generator effect, or three-part dynamo, is what generates a torus-shaped magnetosphere and makes a planet spin on its own axis, due to the current coming from the Sun passing through a planet's poles and into the inner solid core in conjunction with a moon's two-way electromagnetic grip onto the shell slash mantle of the Earth. This solar current, also known as the Birkeland current, is a cord-like electromagnetic funnel that connects the Sun with each planet. It goes through the planet and possibly connects back to the Sun. The mechanism of the Sun's electromagnetic cord current passing through the poles creates a Faraday homopolar generator effect in reverse on the planet's inner solid core in conjunction with the moon's two-way gravitational grip onto the mantle and crust. This homopolar generator effect induces a spin force onto the inner core of a planet. The homopolar electromagnetic generator effect magnetizes the inner solid core. The magnetized inner core subsequently generates a torus-shaped magnetosphere over the entire planet aligned with the Earth's magnetic poles. The magnetosphere in turn protects and shields the bubble-like atmosphere of the planet. Also, the three-part generator force and the magnetosphere have an electromagnetic effect on the gravity force level of a planet. A moon, or many moons by being locked onto a planet's outer shell, they create the dragging force or anchoring force, which keeps the inner core spinning at a different speed than the outer shell slash mantle, inducing an electromagnetic induction effect. A homopolar generator is a DC electrical generator comprising an electrically conductive disc or cylinder rotating in a plane perpendicular to a uniform static magnetic field. A potential difference is created between the center of the disc and the rim, or ends of the cylinder, with an electrical polarity 
that depends on the direction of rotation and the orientation of the field. The following diagram is a representation of Earth's spin force as the homopolar generator effect in reverse. As you can see here, starting with 1, which is the sun's current, the electric current, the sun's electromagnetic cord, going into number 2, the electrically conductive disk, or the planet's solid inner torus-shaped core, and 3, the magnet, or a moon's electromagnetic grip onto a planet's outer shell structure. In a planet scenario, the current from the sun passing through the poles into the core, which is acting like the metallic conductive disk and the mantle and crust locked onto the moon, acting like the solid electromagnet. This is what creates the spin force and magnetosphere. A moon, which is a satellite, or many moons, is a major factor for generating a planet's spin force and magnetosphere through the completion of the three-part generator effect. A homopolar generator is also known as a unipolar generator, a cyclic generator, disk dynamo, or Faraday disk. In a homopolar generator, the spin motion of the disk is generating the electric current as a reaction between the conductive disk and the magnetic field. This mechanism of the homopolar generator effect in reverse, causing planetary spin force, can be applied to explain most of the planet's axial spin force and magnetosphere generation. Also, the magnetosphere is a major factor in protecting an atmosphere and influencing the gravity level of a planet. This book is the first of a series of four books. This book explains the mechanism of the gravitational two-way grip between the Earth and its moon, with chapters and explanation on the Venus retrograde orbit. The second book explains the ongoing magnetic pole shift and possible mini ice age. The third book includes new theories on the dinosaur extinction, and the fourth book, not yet released, focuses more on space travel, new space propulsion technology, and the colonization of Mars. The books are available on Amazon, Apple eBooks, and Barnes and Noble in eBook and paperback format. Thank you for watching, and in the next video, we will be talking about the pole shift and the potential mini ice age.